Hey yo, here we go again. Yoga Voyage. Uh, yeah, so uh, we passed the first week of Feb, February. Uh, the last month I'll be here on the ashram. End is, uh, end is approaching. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been really good time. Like uh, I had the intention of uh, deepening into the practice, taking all that I can from the time that I have. I moved into the hut and all, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been really great, really great. I uh, got well uh, adjusted to the hut. Uh, Maybe the biggest thing being that there is no internet there and uh, that has really allowed me to relax more and, and sort of uh, keep more to myself, not uh, fill my mind with stuff. So I'd had uh, more space to deepen, more space to relax and uh, get sort of softened into appreciating nice simple things of life, everyday experience, that kind of stuff. Opening up to the beauty of day-to-day -day life. And, uh, and yeah, uh, had a really nice practice during this week. Uh, a few days ago, was it four days, uh, we did uh, a forward bending exercise, which is basically sitting down and doing a lot of um, forward facing uh, different uh, stretches uh, and it's an intense practice and we we did like a long version of it really really working working the forward bend and uh, it was intense but uh, it really opened up like my um, diaphragm uh, back like the back on the level of my diaphragm and also like the lower back uh, the parts of the spine that are very close to the pelvis the one that uh, past the pelvis uh, all of that stuff uh, that has been super nice feeling again more at ease in the body uh, lighter standing up better in my postures uh, also the sensations of the body in the lower body uh, keep getting more uh, more alive this is super nice uh, and yeah yeah I think it also like unlocked some some blockages that uh, sort of keep my uh, chest area and the neck a bit sort of uh, unadjusted so after after I had like stuff open up here uh, in the practice of the following days I just kept noticing like things sort of adjusting, popping more to their place. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been saying that for a long time, but uh, it just keeps on getting better. And uh, it feels like it's a process that needs a lot of time. Like uh, the balance of the body, like if you take a look uh, at the problem of uh, finding a place for all the, like, what do you call it? Well, all, all the parts of the spine, I've lost the word now, but vertebra, yeah. So if you, if you want to sort of find a good position for them uh, and maintaining the balance uh, and everything, it's a complicated problem for the nervous system to balance them all out and have you there straight, uh, have everything straight, have your face leveled and all of that. So uh, I guess that's one of the reasons it takes a lot of time because your body learned one way to balance things out, uh, learned to use certain parts of the spine as a part of like all the movements you do in your day or your walk and stuff. And now just opening them all and keeping them all alive so they all participate in like walking, everything. Uh, they remain alive instead of being like blocks and they find a new balance so well i think that's one reason why it needs so much time also like there is some 
issue that maybe it hasn't got a lot of blood flow or or the nerves don't connect very well there or something like these blockages uh, or these uh, like a number spots uh, maybe they take some time also to sort of come more alive get connected um, anyway it's like long time process I keep talking about it but it keeps getting better I keep getting benefits it gets more easier to breathe uh, the voice gets opened more and more the movement uh, it becomes more like flowing the sensations of the body become like also flowing more vivid and uh, also there's a sense of ease in the body because like uh, even though I didn't sort of consciously pay attention to it but if there are like misplacements in the frame in the bones uh, I notice now that it creates a lot of tension uh, inside for the nervous system like you sort of constantly have on the background this feeling that something's not quite right and it's something should be fixed or improved or something and uh, yeah I really think it comes uh, also from like the body alignment like if there is vertebra that are sort of not on their place, not really mobile, uh, they have their effect. And you notice it in meditation as well, like uh, I've noticed it for some time, like these unpleasant feelings that are there if you like put your awareness to it. Uh, so yeah, now I'm really happy to actually be able to solve them. I used to live my life like without noticing in a way. Then I did the meditation and as I kept doing meditation they kept bothering me more and more and more as I sense it got more sensitive and of course they were sort of getting better slowly but here as I've had a lot of time to work the body it uh, really has helped me a lot with that stuff a lot. Yeah. Yeah, what more? I, I wrote something down this time. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's one thing about the forward bending and stuff. Another thing I've noticed is that uh, I've learned really a lot of ease in doing the practice. Like, uh, I've been tired a few days, going there, sort of felt like I don't have any energy. Uh, but I've just learned a sort of ease towards it like uh, I just do it and uh, I felt it doesn't take like energy like when when the mind is sort of relaxed and you do the minimum you need and you learn efficiency look learn using the body effectively so I've just taken notice that I can do the practice even when I go in uh, sort of tired I don't I get less tired doing it and it's not an issue and, and yeah also a nice thing to notice uh, regarding energy is uh, uh, this uh, this day off I just feel really fresh in the body and energetic I feel I don't even need a day off uh, but I'm gonna take it anyway I'm gonna let this day of rest for myself and see see what follows but but I don't feel like I need it, but it's it's super nice to have anyway. I wonder how I'll feel like tomorrow remains to be seen. So yeah, yeah, something also I wanted to share. I uh, finally decided to start studying a little bit of Sanskrit. I've had a lot of resistance to it being Finnish. We usually study like three languages, of course Finnish and then maybe English or German and Swedish is for everyone. And, uh, and I've learned Spanish and I feel ah, so many languages. So now uh, I haven't been that motivated to start studying this Sanskrit, uh, which is done a lot like here. And in the class I learned that it's, it's sort of the basis of all the mantra practice that uh, we do as part of Tantra. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, it, so it's important in tr this tradition. And, and uh, the teacher even said that uh, 
or they keep saying that uh, another word for Tantra uh, is not conscious sexuality. Uh, that's new, new stuff, Neo Tantra and that. Uh, the traditional Tantra, at least in our system, another name for it is uh, Mantra Marga, which is like the path of the mantra. So, and we do all of that stuff in Sanskrit. So, um, so yeah, the curiosity finally won and I decided, oh, what the heck, I'll give it a try. I started learning the alphabet and um, and yeah, it's uh, it's gotten interesting. Uh, it's really interesting to learn the right. It reminds me of the time that I learned the <laughs> European alphabet uh, when I was in first grade. And now like uh, living that kind of process again is really interesting now that I'm an adult. Uh, I can see what I sort of did wrong back then, and uh, and yeah, it, it's interesting stuff. Like uh, I didn't sort of realize when I learned language the first time or learned to write, read the first time, the impact it has. But here, like uh, in the mantra practice and everything, a lot of attention is put into how words shape your reality, and uh, the mantras are a way to sort of dissolve stuff and uh, and yeah we, we also learned a really interesting like practice uh, but about like uh, well I can tell you what's it about it's sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, relating to <laughs> letters in a different way to the sounds and the shapes of them uh, and uh, yeah, I won't, I won't share in detail because like um, in this school uh, the teachers wish that everything is passed on in like a face-to-face -face setting, in like real contact between people. So uh, I won't be sharing in detail, but uh, I sort of have a sense for the practice that the, it can uh, establish a bit different relating to language, communication, to the letters themselves and through that perhaps bring more awareness and uh, liberation from like uh, habits and uh, your uh, emotional uh, relating to the words themselves. Mm. Anyway, uh, it uh, remains to be seen but uh, interesting to also study this uh, the language and this type of uh, mental practice balancing out like all the body work which is of course inner work as well but like uh, using also the mind a bit more uh, it's nice uh, let's see where it goes so yeah the, that about sums it up for for the week the new group is nice. We got lots of people from Finland, from the Shakta Yoga School, which is nice. Uh, the people are also, the, it seems like we have a more social vibe this time. I feel like uh, December, January, we're all like super introspective stuff going uh, deep inside. And uh, I feel that people were not as connected as now. And uh, that has its benefits. I learned a lot. I appreciated that also. And I appreciate that I still have the space if I want to focus on myself um, and sort of uh, shut off once in a while. But uh, it's also nice to be more in touch with people. Yeah, yeah I like that. I was missing it. Yeah, but uh, as I said, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching.